Welcome back to FAIR TV. I'm Peter Hart. The clearest thing about the Israeli attacks on the Gaza Strip is that the Palestinian people are suffering. Over 200 have been killed. The majority of them are civilians. Several dozen are children. That's what makes the U.S. media's strive for balance so jarring. A report from Gaza must apparently be paired with an update from Tel Aviv to show that Israelis are fearful too. One might even conclude from this kind of coverage that media value Israeli lives more than Arab lives. That might sound harsh, but consider CBS Face the Nation host Bob Schieffer. On his July 13th program, he hosted two Israeli guests, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and Ambassador Ron Dermer, and just one Palestinian, Ambassador Man Rashid Arakat. But it wasn't just about that imbalance. On several occasions, Schieffer went out of his way to express genuine concern for Israeli fears about rocket attacks coming from Gaza. I think uh, this war really came home to a lot of Americans this morning. While I was interviewing the prime minister, the air raid uh, sirens went off over Tel Aviv, and then before the interview was over, we heard the people in the background telling people they could come out from the uh, from the shelters. Schieffer repeated this several times in the show. Those rocket warnings clearly affected him, and he asserted Americans felt the same way. But the day he was saying this, U.S. newspapers were reporting an Israeli strike on a center for disabled adults and an attack on a house where a Hamas police official was. But those deaths apparently did not bring the war home for Bob Schieffer their lives did not even register. Iran's nuclear program is a constant subject of U.S. reporting, much of it misleading. Here's NBC Meet the Press host David Gregory on July 13th. With respect, the international community is divided about a lot of things. They're actually not divided about one thing. They think Iran is up to no good and wants to build a nuclear weapon. Now that's the kind of assertion you hear a lot when it comes to Iran. But it just isn't true. Most of the world, in fact, supports Iran's right to enrich uranium. What was unusual, though, this time around, was that David Gregory said this to Iran's foreign minister, and he could challenge Gregory. First of all, let's define international community. The day I went to the meeting of 5 plus 1 or E3 plus 3 in New York, uh, I, they said we represent the international community, and I told them, I'm just coming to you from chairing a meeting of 120 countries called the Non-Aligned Movement, where Iran has been the chairman and is the chairman, and they support us. Having someone on the show to point out that the world is not just the United States and several other countries was refreshing. Less refreshing, though, was what came next. Gregory presented a reality check on his Iranian guest. For that, he turned to reporter Jeffrey Goldberg, who wrote some of the most notably inaccurate stories about Iraq's WMDs and Saddam Hussein's non-existent ties to Al-Qaeda. He would not be most people's idea of a good fact-checker then. And finally, for years, ABC and corporate giant Walmart have had a very close relationship. The corporation sponsored ABC News content, like its Person of the Week segment, and the companies even co-marketed a perfume line that we'd rather not think too much about. So it wasn't a shock to see a segment on July 8th on the World News broadcast that was essentially a Walmart commercial touting its program to buy more American products. The company is inviting U.S. inventors to pitch them ideas. As ABC explained it, They're all here as part of that new promise from Walmart to spend $250 billion over the next decade on American-made products for their stores. Economists estimating that could create one million new jobs in the U.S. Now, those extremely rosy job projections appear to come not from economists, per se, but from a corporate consulting group with ties to Walmart. Another red flag in the segment? This is not a PR thing that is an economic thing. Now, when the CEO of a big company like Walmart insists something is not a PR thing, well, it probably is. A critical news report may have pointed out that Walmart's low-wage business model leaves employees in need of something to the tune of $6 billion a year in public assistance. But that would have been journalism, though, not so corporate-friendly. I'm Peter Hart. Thanks for tuning in to FAIR TV.